Good uh, afternoon. Uh, today we celebrate uh, the 25th anniversary for the Yosef Buchmann Doctoral Fellowship Fund. And before I say a few words, uh, and it will be really very few because uh, one of the results of the Buchmann celebration is that they made me a movie star, so I said everything on the film. Uh, is to acknowledge uh, two presidents, uh, two of my predecessors that are here. Actually, one of them had to leave. Uh, one, I'm the seventh president, so the third president, Habash, was here. And the fourth president, Moshe Mani, is here. Uh, last time I, I saw him was two years ago, before I became president, and I saw him in this building. And uh, he congratulated I, I was elected, but hasn't started my job, hasn't started my job yet. And he congratulated me and asked me, how do I feel? I said, you know, I'm happy, but I'm a little bit anxious. You know, things are not simple. He told me, don't worry. So I asked him, why? He said, cannot get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> Moshe, it can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, you can say a lot about yourself, Buchmann. Every university or hospital or, or an institution that depends on uh, the generosity of uh, people. Uh, so usually uh, we, it depends firstly also on many friends, on a large number of friends. But then there are sometimes a small number, uh, and some, some institutions don't have any of them. But sometimes they have two, three, four numbers, number of people that really are crucial to the institution. And they are... And the, what they give actually transforms the institution. And uh, Yossel is uh, one of the transformational uh, donors to our university. He has done incredibly, incredible things to our university. Uh, this example uh, of the uh, doctoral fellowship fund, uh, which was given 25 years ago, it's still the largest uh, doctor, doctoral university fund for a Tel Aviv University. And uh, when I speak to donors, uh, they always ask me, well, what's your first priority? Uh, so my first, uh, it's uh, the, the two tied for first. Uh, and one is the PhD fellowships, and, and the other one is the Segel Sayer, a new, new faculty. And the uh, PG fellowships, uh, if today we got 500 more fellowships, uh, they will disappear in one stacking sound. And they will go to some terrific students that we cannot support. And some of them will go abroad to study abroad, uh, even though the best advisor is here in Tel Aviv University. So, so he his first, he's one, probably one of the first uh, big gifts to, to us uh, went to this uh, uh, doctoral fellowships, which is really the highest uh, priority for the university. And since its inception, we already, this fund supported over 300 doctoral students. Uh, in addition, it supported uh, uh, students from Wolfgang Goethe University in Frankfurt, and it leads to this exchange between uh, the two universities. And as you all know, we see it in uh, the Buchmann School, uh, Faculty of Law, uh, that uh, Yossel uh, uh, endowed to, to, to name uh, his parents that perished in the Holocaust. And, uh, and what he's done in the music school is simply amazing because uh, those of you who were in the concert yesterday, uh, it was terrific, but it wouldn't exist. You know, the, the, school, of, uh, the, the school of music would, was a candidate for disappearing uh, and seven, five, seven, nine years ago, I don't know. And in, s in some sense, he also saved the school. And uh, this orchestra now is uh, one of the gems of the university. So... That's what I mean by transforming. You know, we wouldn't have this orchestra that played, as I said, in the Tonhalle and in the United Nations General Assembly and still planned to, to, to play all over the world. So, it, and everybody was really, some people were crying when they heard this, this orchestra playing. So it was really uh, terrific. And, uh, and Yossel, of course, made many, many other contributions. I won't go over them because they are outside the university, to the city, uh, to the hospital, uh, and to the IPO, Israel Philharmonic. And also he was very crucial to this connection between uh, our 
School of Music and the Philharmonic, and of course he also added the name of Zubin Mehta to the name, but, but in a sense this is like in baseball you say farm team for, uh, for the Philharmonic. Uh, some of the best, the best students go to, to, to the Philharmonic later. And, and this new thing with Adler of the international uh, program, uh, I just realized uh, uh, it actually made the school jump several degrees in quality because it added competition. You know, and the Israelis cannot be complacent. They have to compete. They have to prove themselves. So we, we will, it will take it to really new heights. So really, Tel Aviv University is fortunate to have Yosel and Bareket. So the only thing I know about the, the law school is the, the Bareket appeared. So <laughs> where's Bareket? Over there. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, uh, he really made transformational gifts to this university and, and, and this fund of graduate student support is really fantastic and still unbeatable. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for, for your continued support. Uh, you've been wonderful and we are fortunate to have you as friends. Good afternoon, President Galil, Vice President Yechil Ben Svi, Mr. and Mrs. Buchman, ladies and gentlemen, if the Arabs have oil, which they do, and the Africans have diamonds, and the Americans have, I'm not sure what, but let's say steel and coal. They used to have. They used to have a lot of things. Uh, what Israel has is its natural resource in its sharp minds and its young people. That is what Israel has. By supporting the doctoral fellowships at Tel Aviv University, Yosef Buchmann is helping to develop the national asset. Uh, I er learned earlier, uh, just before the meeting, that uh, the first doctoral fellowship was awarded to uh, Tamar Dayan, who it is here somewhere, I believe. Tamar? Tamar. She's the first, and I, I'm not going to say it was 25 years ago, but uh, <laughs> see, it worked, and now we have a star here. Uh, each fellowship enables another exceptional student to fulfill his or her academic potential and to take the first formational steps to the path of distinction. Israel's doctoral students represent the future of the state of Israel and the bedrock of the long-term survival of the State of Israel. Today's PhD students are tomorrow's leaders, educators, experts, and innovators. Yet, studying for a PhD in Israel is no simple task. Day-to-day -day expenses extract a heavy toll on the, teacher, on the students' finances, whereas undergraduates are generally younger, unmarried, Doctoral students often have spouses, children to support. Many doctoral students have an additional obligation of reserve army duty. And just past, this past winter, we had a number of them that were called up for the operation in Gaza. Combined, combined with this, research at the doctoral level, level is rigorous and demands a high degree of concentration. Working at another job is simply in, not feasible. That is why the Buchmann Fellowship Fund has been instrumental in enabling talented young scientists and scholars at the university to concentrate on their studies and to excel. The success of Israel economically, culturally, and technologically reflects on Jews the world over. The Buchmann standards that and that is why we are here today, to salute him and his family for the long vision that he's had for his engaging support of the university. Now I invite the members of the presidium uh, to take their seats up front so that we can see a special prepared video.
Josef Buchmann was born in Lodz, Poland. He grew up in a home where charity was the highest value, helping the needy, taking public responsibility, and assisting fellow Jews. This caring home was shattered by the Holocaust. Of the extended Buchmann family in Europe, only Josef and his two sisters survived, orphaned of their parents. Years later, Buchmann was to dedicate the Faculty of Law at Tel Aviv University in the memory of his parents, Eliezer and Hayasora. He was to sponsor a Holocaust commemoration concert at the United Nations, performed by students of the Buchmann Meta School of Music, which he founded at Tel Aviv University. We are indeed grateful to Mr. Joseph Buchmann and Maestro Zerbin Meta. There were all kinds of reactions after the Holocaust. Many survivors didn't know what to do, where to go. The homes were destroyed. One of the exceptions is Josl Buchmann. He built himself since he was a teenager. A self-made man, he came to a decision that you must tie the connections with the Jewish people in general and the Israelis particularly. Buchmann survived Lodge Ghetto and Auschwitz with the help of his friends. The principle of reciprocal help forged in these tragic circumstances became the main passion of his life. I have asked the, uh, Mr. Buchmann to come to visit the campus, to a uh, endowed building at the university. And his answer was uh, crystal clear. I don't care about brick and mortars. I want to invest in human capital. That's how the uh, fund came about to be the largest doctoral fellowship fund at Tel Aviv University. Herr Benzwi war seinerzeit zu Besuch und er kam an diesem Abend mit der frohen Botschaft, dass Herr Buchmann vor wenigen Stunden den Josef Buchmann Doktorandenstipendienfonds gegründet hat. Without he himself having the opportunity to be educated, found his highest priority in supporting education. The Josef Buchmann Doctoral Fellowship Fund was set up 25 years ago by Josef Buchmann. To date, it has allocated over 300 fellowships and is the largest doctoral fund at Tel Aviv University. The Doctoral Fellowship Fund puts his credo into practice by supporting outstanding doctoral students. Through their research, they establish themselves and advance vital scientific and social issues. They also promote the development of the State of Israel. My name is Nourish Faz. I'm a PhD student uh, in Tel Aviv University uh, in the medicine department. Nowadays, there are no special criteria uh, defining the stage of cancer. In our research, we identified this tool that can enable us to categorize it more objectively. I'm very privileged to get the Buchmann Scholarship. It enabled me to do what I love. Receiving the Buchmann Fund is important since its interest is not in the commercial aspect, but rather in the human value. An academic career in Israel is hard for everybody, but it was particularly difficult for me because I was a new immigrant. It was hard to, to be absorbed in Israeli society, in the Israeli academy, um, and the Buchmann Scholarship was simultaneously a financial help, but also a great emotional and psychological help because I felt that my efforts were being recognized by the academic establishment, and I'm profoundly grateful uh, for the scholarship in every possible way. My name is Van Barzilai. My uh, specialty is uh, software engineering. We are trying to discover new practices of software how to write code efficiently and transfer this knowledge further. I also work with the IDF on uh, military software training programs. The generous donation of the Buchmann Fellowship Fund enables me to focus on my academic research and military involvement. I was one of the first Buchmann Fellows. Of course, what this fellowship allowed me was to dedicate my time to research. I have many graduate students. Actually, I'm very proud to say that my first five PhD students received teaching positions in four Israeli universities. So actually, the uh, very generous investment of Mr. Buchmann in my scientific career has already had fruit also for another generation of uh, younger scientists in Israel.
My name is Sherry Kreitzer Levy. I'm a PhD student uh, at Tel Aviv University, the law faculty, and now I teach family law and inheritance law. The Buchmann Scholarship really helped me in my uh, studies. First of all, it allowed me to start the direct track of doctoral studies right after my clerkship at the Supreme Court. Um, and also it allowed me to focus solely on the research without having to worry about financial difficulties. I received the Buchmann Fellowship Fund for two years and it helped me greatly. Our lab is studying how to manipulate cell function using uh, tiny bubbles that can float inside the body and deliver drugs in a very specific manner to cancer cells. By doing this, we are eliminating or minimizing the amount of side effects. I lost my mother to cancer when I was 18 years old. And I decided to devote my life into uh, research in the cancer field. The Buchmann Fellowship helped me to develop into an independent scientist. My name is Alona Epstein. I study here in uh, Buchmann Meta School of Music. In many senses, all the students who study here are recipients of Buchmann Scholarship because the academy was facing big financial difficulties and uh, the place was about to be closed. Thanks to Buchmann donation, it was possible to continue. Many of my colleagues have to wait many years to getting any kind of financial support. So I'm uh, very thankful to Mr. and Mrs. Buchmann for giving me an opportunity to write my music here in Israel, in the country where I live. Ich war damals äh, nicht in der Lage, auch zu studieren und auch zu arbeiten. Buchmanns äh, Stipendium war für mich äh, unabdingbar. Herr Buchmann war schon immer jemand, der daran geglaubt hatte, dass man Wissen, wissenschaftliches Wissen, aber auch kulturelles Wissen, Generationen und anderen äh, Bevölkerungsschichten überbringen sollte. The Buchmann Fund is binational, awarding fellowships both at Tel Aviv University and at Johann Wolfgang Goethe University in Frankfurt, Germany. Frankfurt und Tel Aviv sind nahezu 30 Jahre Partnerstädte. Es ist eine Partnerschaft, die gelebt wird durch Männer und Frauen wie Josef Buchmann, die äh, viel investieren in die Ausbildung. Und Josef Buchmann sieht man an, wie er sich darüber freut, dass dieses Lebenswerk von ihm bei der jungen Generation ankommt. Und wir leben die Freundschaft Israel-Deutschland in Frankfurt und Tel Aviv. Josef Buchmann ist ein großer Meilenstein für diese Entwicklung gewesen. Wir Frankfurter sind äh, eigentlich stolz darauf, dass in unseren Mauern die Idee zustande kam, einen so bedeutsamen Fonds zu stiften. Und wir sehen ja auch, wie segensreich er wirkt. The mayor of Lodge approached me and asked me for her because he decided to build a monument for Ghetto Lodge. And when I approached Buchmann and told him about the problem, he was there. And today there is a monument in the city of Lodge. This is Buchmann. He is always there for hospitals, for the university. And I have to tell you, as a musician, the music school in the University of Tel Aviv, it's so important for the state of Israel that I really admire the, the man. I've known Joseph Buchmann for over 20 years. He has given to the Philharmonic in every way possible. Chairs for the orchestra, pianos for the soloists. He has bought instruments for the Buchmann Meta School of Music. And whenever I go to Master Yosele, I need help. He never even asks. His heart is so big. The state of Israel owes a lot to Mr. Joseph Buchmann. Mr. Buchmann is a person of integrity. He is a good friend. We thank him and he is one of the most philanthropic givers to, to Israel. The Buchmann Doctoral Fellowship Fund helped stop somewhat the brain drain because it supported the students and they stayed here and didn't go abroad. Yosele, ich begrüße dich, ich umarme dich mit ganzem Herzen. Bin, tut mir leid, dass ich nicht hier bin. We all love you very, very much. And our friendship is very, very important to me. And I value it, and I value it till the end of my life. Thank you so much. Ich miss der Sugen, Yosel. Tate Mame, Leser mit Chaye Sure Buchma. Sie freuen um die Bruche für den Lodger Ghetto. Missen Zahn, sehe jetzt Frieden im Himmel. Asayazin, 
oder Sakovit mit der Sastatus, weil er dort verstanden, mit der Versicherung der Zukunft für die jüdischen Volk in Medinat Israel. Yosem, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Without your great help, Tel Aviv University would not be what it is today. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, first I'd like to give you also the, uh, the film. <coughs> so, this film uh, was made by our own students uh, from the Department of Film and Television, Yolanda and David Katz, Faculty of the Arts, and the Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Hannah Navay, is here. Um, And actually, the two uh, are here today. The producer, Erez Bernholtz. Erez? Erez. Please stand, stand up. up. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> And the director, Yasmin Novak. <laughs> I'll use this opportunity to tell you something not exactly connected to this event, but something I didn't know when I came here. Actually, it took me a year to discover that our film school may be the best in the world. Uh, maybe I exaggerate, it might be the top three, but it's really, I won't get into details, but that's a fact. And I'd like to acknowledge Rava Eli Sari and Ilanit Kessel from the Development and Public Affairs Division for making the video happen. Please stand up. And we now will hear two uh, very short lectures with, from former Buchmann Fellows. Uh, you know, as you noticed, Tamar also said it, but the Buchmann Fellows and their descendants, they're already faculty members all over the place. So uh, you really, they really selected some terrific uh, students to be Buchmann Fellows. So the first uh, lecture is Professor Daphna Joel from the Department of... A psychology here uh, from the Gershon H. Gordon Faculty of Social Science, and I think the Dean is there too. Noah, are you here? Yeah. So, Daphna, please join us. Good afternoon. I have been receiving support from the Buchmann Fellowship uh, during my PhD studies. And it is a great pleasure for me to be here and thank you personally on my behalf and on behalf of all other students that you have supported in the last 25 years. And I will tell you shortly about the work I've done during my PhD studies and what I've been doing since in my laboratory here in Tel Aviv University. During my PhD, I studied the connections between several brain regions which are responsible for our normal behavior and are also involved in our abnormal behavior, such as disorders like Parkinson's disorder, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, to name a few that probably you've heard of. And after uh, finishing my PhD, I received an alone scholarship and continued here in Tel Aviv University as a, a, a staff member. And during the last 10 or so years, I've been working mainly on understanding the neuropathology of obsessive compulsive disorder, one of the disorders I just mentioned. And maybe you know that OCD, as we usually call it, affects about 2% of the population. It involves repeated thoughts, obsessions, and repeated acts, compulsions, and it is very stressful and um, uh, creates great pain in patients. And some patients even uh, commit suicide because of the disorder. And 
what we have now today for, to offer patients is uh, pharmacological treatment and also psychotherapy, but it helps only some of the patients, not all of them, and about 25% don't have any cure today. Or we don't have cure also for the rest, but we have some alleviation of symptoms. So it is very important to understand better what causes the disorder, what are the neural mechanisms of the disorder with the hope to help additional patients uh, recover or get uh, better quality of life with this disorder. And in my laboratory, we have developed an animal model, a rat model of this disorder. We use a behavioral manipulation to make the rat compulsive. So they behave compulsively. And then we can test their brains. We can test new drugs and try to understand better the disorder. And I will give you just a few examples of the things we are doing. We're using the rats to uh, screen for new drugs that can be effective in, in humans. As because as I said, the current uh, psycho, uh, pharmacotherapy for OCD helps only about half of the patients. We also use uh, the animal model to try and develop new lines of treatment. In recent years, there have been uh, great developments in neurosurgery and in many neurological disorders, most notably in Parkinson's disorder, we now use electrodes to stimulate specific regions of the brain to alleviate symptoms in patients in which the current uh, pharmacology doesn't help anymore. And about 100,000 100, Parkinson's disease patients already uh, under, undergone surgery and have electrodes implanted in their brain to treat the disorder. There have been several attempts to develop such a treatment also for OCD, but neurosurgeons don't really know where to stimulate the brain in OCD because we don't know the pathology of OCD as we do the pathology of Parkinson's disease. And neurosurgeons just try by trial and error to find the correct place where stimulation in the human brain will have the best uh, beneficial effect for patient. And what we are doing in the model is systematically mapping the brain to find out which regions, stimulation of which regions, will have an anticompulsive effect. So this is the kind of thing you can do in rats, and of course you cannot do in humans. And we have already found three regions that uh, can be effective in humans, uh, stimulation can be effective in humans. Another thing we are doing is trying to uh, find out if there is an autoimmune basis for OCD. It has been suggested that in some children with OCD, uh, an autoimmune disorder emerges after infection with Streptococcus A. You may all know that if you have throat infection and you have Streptococcus A, then you need to take 10 days of antibiotics. Probably you heard about this. And the reason is not that the bacteria is so dangerous, but our immune response is dangerous because our immune response sometimes, antibodies created by the immune response, sometimes attack the brain or the heart or the skin. And it is possible that also in OCD in some children is a result of such a, a, an infection. And what we are doing is, again, immune, immunizing the rats with Streptococcus A, and this indeed leads to the development of antineural antibodies, which, cause, which attack their brain and causes compulsive behavior. And now we are studying what exactly goes wrong there, what part of the brain and which molecules the antibodies are attacking, and then with the hope that with this understanding we can develop new therapies for these kids. And so this is a few of the things that we have been doing in the laboratory in the last 10 years, and some of this is thanks to you. So I want to thank you again for your generous support, and thank you all. I was mistaken. The, the first lecture is a former Buchmann Fellow. The second and last lecture is Nurit Paz Yaakov, is a current uh, Buchmann Fellow, and she will speak about cancer beyond genetics. I'm a PhD student at the Tel Aviv University in the Human Genetic Department. I work under the supervision of Professor Gidi Rechavi, head of the Cancer Research Center at the Tel Hashemer Hospital. And I, this is the third year and sponsored by the Buchmann Scholarship. 
Uh, and on this opportunity, I would like to express my gratitude to uh, the Buchmann Fund for enabling me to work daily and study on the subject that interests me the most. It is a great privilege to do that, and I'm honored. Um, I would like to uh, tell you shortly about my work. So the basic foundation of our body is the DNA, composed from four basic elements, A, G, C, and T, arranged in a very specific manner encrypting the essence of our body. The DNA is later on transcribed into RNA, which is translated into protein. In this information flow, there are additional modifications affecting the DNA, the RNA, and the protein. Uh, one of these modifications is RNA editing. This is the subject of my talk. RNA editing is the transition of one of the letters in the RNA, A, into another, I. This transition is mediated by a family of protein called ADARs. Uh, RNA editing referred to as an epigenetic event since it epi over the genetic, it does not affect the DNA sequence. Uh, recently, our lab revealed that this modification is not rare as previously was thought, but rather a very abundant one, affecting tens of thousands of sites in the human genome. Computer analysis showed that humans express higher editing uh, levels relative to other organisms such as mouse, rat, chicken, or fly. The importance of this modification is that it alters the sequence of the RNA from that encoded in the DNA, thus changing the code, creating variation. The, the, this diversity is of major importance um, since uh, RNA editing is essential for the normal development. Misregulation of this uh, modification has been implicated in the etiology of uh, many neurological disorders such as epilepsy, ALS and depression in mammals. We are currently investigating in other animals, one threatening one, the cancer. In our research, we took normal and uh, tumor uh, cells from different organs, as you can see here, and we compared their editing level. Uh, our results point that both bioinformatic and experiment experimental method, that there is a reduction a massive reduction and a very significant one in the expression of editing level in the normal tissue compared to the um, tumor tissue. This is best illustrated in the brain tissue, which is one of the most edited uh, organs, and you can see here that there is much higher editing level in the normal brain compared to the tumor one. Next, we test whether, uh, since this modification is global and the reduction is very uh, global, we checked what is the expression level of the enzyme that mediate this modification. So in humans, there are three enzymes that catalyze this reaction, called other one other 2 and other 3 We tested normal, healthy uh, brain compared to different type of tumors, and as you can appreciate from this slide, you can see that all three members display reduction in the expression of these proteins. This is especially important in other three, which uh, its reduction correlated with the grade of malignancy, meaning that glioblastoma multiforme, which is the most aggressive of brain tumors, display a very significant reduction of 99 decrease in this protein. One of the biggest problems in the diagnostic of uh, this cancer is the subjective criteria uh, currently used in order to classify this cancer. And our finding uh, might use as an efficient tool for a better classification of these uh, kind of tumors. Finally, we showed, we tried to uh, elevate the editing level in the cancer cells. So for that purpose, we took glioblastoma multiforme cell lines, as you can see here, and we elevated the level of the others in them. And you can see that the level of proliferation reduced dramatically and the level of editing elevated. So to conclude, RNA editing and other expression level are reduced in human cancer. The elevation of the others result in decreased proliferation rate of the cancer cell. And finally, this research provides new diagnostic markers that can monitor and potentially participate in the response to therapy and the early detection of cancer. 
And I would just like to thank my mentor, Professor Gidi Rechavi, and the head of our lab, Dr. Nineta Morillo, and our collaborators. And of course, the Buchmann Fund for enabling me this research. Thank you very much. Uh, this brings the program to an end, but one last thing. Let's have an applause or even a standing ovation to Yossel Buchmann. And I will add also warm thanks to Bereket. That was very nice and very kind to her alma mater. So there is still some uh, small refreshments outside.